In this lesson, we clarify steps involved in designing of survey, presentation of data, and analysis of data collected as result of that survey. Suppose we had a plan to collect responses of students for the last math exam and we need to estimate how many marks were on the average obtained by students in our math class. So for that purpose, we have a clear cut purpose of survey. So step one is defining the purpose of the survey and step two, while we are defining the question for the survey, we need to take care of the following factors, voice, use of language, timing, privacy, cultural sensitivity, ethics, cost, and time. So keeping all these factors in mind, we design the language of the question which was to be asked. And we have clarified that in the last lesson, lesson number three, how we can circulate that questions to our fellow students and obtain their responses. So let's get started and suppose that we have received responses like 42, 59, 23, 84, 93, 89, 99, 24, 36, 7, 19, 15, 19, 25, 27, 31, 37, 39, 41, 47, 50, 51, 59, 60, 68, or 80, and 74, 94, and 87, let's say. Suppose we have these responses from students. Now, the first step is complete. We designed the survey. We conducted, we sent out our questionnaire, and this is the data we have received. But like you can see that this data we have received is of no use unless we make it presentable. So let's do this exercise now to make this data presentable. And for that purpose, we will make a tally of this data. So we can see that our marks are between 0 to 100. So just for convenience, we can make classes of 10 length of length 10 means that the first class is 0 to 9. So all the people, those who have received marks in this interval will be counted here. And from 10 to 19, from 20 to 29, from 30 to 39, and 40 to 49, 50 to 59, 60 to 69, and 70 to 79, and 80 to 89 and 90 to 99. So these are the classes and now we will see which number belongs to which class. 42. 42 belongs to this class so we make a line here. 59. So this is done. 59 59 belongs to this class, so we make a line here. So we cross that number out, and then 23. 23 belongs to this class. And then 84. 84 belongs to 
this class so we make a line there and 93 93 belongs to this last class and 89 89 belongs to this class so we take another line and 99 99 belongs to this class we put another line and 24 24 belongs to this line we add another line and then 36 36 belongs to this line and then 7 7 belongs to this line and 19 belongs to this line 15 15 belongs to this line and 19 19 belongs to this line again 25 25 belongs to this line 27 27 belongs to the same group again 31 belongs to this 37 belongs to this and 39 belongs to this and 41 41 is in this group 47 is in this group 50 50 is in this group 51 is also in this group and 59 is also in this group 60 is in this group 80 is in this group here and 74 74 is in this group and 94 is in this group 87 is in this group so let's say there was one more value say 55 55 if this was the value then we already have four lines for this value we will make it like this and this is what is called tallying the data so if we have raw data then we make appropriate number of classes if you are not told how many classes or what should be the length of the class so usually we will make about 10 classes 15 classes 20 classes or 5 classes but sometimes it's given that what will be the class but if you don't have the class then make the class like 0 to depending upon the range of the value so take the minimum value and the maximum value and take out their difference so in this case the minimum value was uh, 0 there is no value below 0 and there is, can't be any value more than 100 therefore we divided this into 10 and we kept 10 as the length of the interval so 0 to 9 was the first 10 to 19 was the second that's how we made it so these are called classes class and this is called tally and then if we now count these lines 1 3 4 4 3 5 1 1 4 3 this is called tallying of data and once we have made the tally we can represent this data on a graph paper and uh, this is what is called the tallying of data we will now in the next lesson we will make the graph of this data